checking. Homage to the Guru and the protector, Venerable Manjagosha. Your wisdom is brilliant and pure like the sun, free from the clouds of the two obscurations. You perceive the whole of reality exactly as it is, and so hold the book of transcendental wisdom at your heart. You look upon all beings in prison within samsara, enshrouded by the thick darkness of ignorance and tormented by suffering, with the love of a mother for her only child. Your enlightened speech endowed with 60 melodious tones, like the thundering roar of a dragon, awakens us from the sleep of destructive emotions and frees us from the chains of karma. Dispelling the darkness of ignorance, you wield the sword of wisdom to cut through all our suffering. Here from the very beginning, you have reached the end of the 10 Bhumis and perfected all enlightened qualities. Foremost of the Buddha's heirs, your body is adorned with 112 marks of enlightenment. To Manja Gosha, the gentle voice, I prostrate and pray, dispel the darkness from my mind. Oma Rapasanadi, Oma Rapasanadi. With all of your kindness and love, let your wisdom shining light clear the darkness of my ignorance once and for all. Grant me, I pray, the intelligence, the brilliance to understand the scriptures, the words of the Buddha, the works of the masters. And whenever I wish to look upon you or ask of you anything at all, Lord and protector Manji Shri, let me see you without any hindrance. Yes. Now, now we'll say the prayer. Am I am I uh, mistaken? Oh, here we go. Oh, my friend, I need the the prayer to ask Lama to teach us. Lama, Lama, <laughs> Lama, Lama. With all my heart, I pray that you will teach us tonight. We need you so much. <laughs> So, oh, here we could we could I do the formal one? Oh, okay, to fulfill the needs of all beings of their various levels of understanding, we request that you turn the wheel of Dharma, including the lesser and greater common and extraordinary approaches.
Yeah, good evening. Hi. So, hello, remote <laughs> but close in heart people. <clears throat> So we're going to uh, start our discussion on the Madhimakalankara. Let's see if I have the book here. I don't know why I like showing the book, you know. <laughs> so Chantarakshita, of course, um, was a friend of Guru Mshis, um, and um, uh, Guru Mshay came to Shantaraksha's aid um, to establish a Sambhi, first um, practice center, um, formal practice center monastery in Tibet. So we're going to spend a little time, um, and then this will be the last um, kind of uh, philosophical text, if you could use that meditative philosophical text we're going to use. Um, and then the next part of the uh, Dharma study program will be um, going over some retreat manuals and practice texts. <clears throat> so, um, uh, in, in a way, I'm, I'm glad this is a very select group because um, actually it really doesn't make a lot of sense to go through retreat manuals and practice texts um, without uh, having uh, cleared some of the intellectual cobwebs first. The Indian Buddhist method is to, uh, based on the Buddhist teaching, is you first listen to a lecture, Dharma talk by the Buddha, Sutra, and then um, you go either back to your tree or your cave or your um, cell and, and you meditate. So it's a different model than um, a do-it-yourself model. Do-it-yourself models are like, has some value in it, of course. The uh, California model is people meditate, um, read their own books, form their own opinions, and then show up and tell me how reality is. <laughs> and then want some kind of confirmation. <laughs> so um, here, it, uh, which is how we get started, you know, so we have to get started that way. You know, we, we generally don't first like actually meet an authentic teacher and then get instruction and then start meditating. We, we, we kind of have to start it on our own, don't we? But um, uh, if we want to be professionals, professional bodhisattvas, then we actually uh, receive proper uh, training and then put that training into practice. So uh, even the Buddhist teachings start off with uh, theory and then go to practice. So just like people have to go to law school and then they have to pass a bar and then they have to practice and still be, you know, a lower scale. Uh, same way with therapists, same way with physicians and nurses in any professional situation, accountants too, you know, you have to um, first learn some theory. The idea of theory isn't just to amass information or explanation, but to uh, challenge some of our um, idiotic and uh, non-thought out beliefs uh, and to give us some kind of working uh, basis of explanation and insight and beliefs so that when we actually start the training of um, meditation and actually try to put it into practice, which I call performance, then um, uh, we have some kind of map. I suppose eventually, um, you know, we could figure things out just like um, monkeys could eventually compose Shakespeare, right? But we're here to actually learn as quickly as possible. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm glad we have a few people here today. Um, six or seven and we're um six and a half <laughs> and uh we're about the same number remotely um 
some people, you know, three hours away, so it's a big deal. <clears throat> um, the meditation manuals um, uh, only work also if we do the amount of yogic practice daily. So uh, I have to do a lot <laughs> um, to really understand uh, not only my own mind, but how to help others. So um, I'm not interested in lying to people. So if you really want to be of help to others professionally, you also have to do a lot. With some benefit, of course, if we're just meditating six or 12 hours, six or 12 minutes a day, we're going to have some benefit. But um, to really have the same experience that um, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, male and female, have had over the ages. Yeah, it takes some work. We've all worked a lot in our professions and put a lot of energy into uh, families and uh, learning certain tasks. So um, to understand the nature of our awareness and how to uh, act practically in the world and how to teach that to others takes an equal amount of dedication like that. <clears throat> Some people have fantastic uh, uh, karma, and maybe they can just hear the teaching once and you can get it. Uh, I've never met anybody like that, but I've heard about that. <laughs> so um, all the teachers that I've met in the 20th century, 21st century, I've had to do, um, even if they were high-level tulkas and wonderful uh, reverse, they all, they all did a lot of study and practice. So for those who are watching tonight and here tonight, um, you know, I applaud that, that you're they're doing that amount of study and practice. <clears throat> it's one thing to understand nature of awareness and nature of reality and phenomena and the self, but it's another thing to, um, you know, guide others, right? It's a whole different ballgame, guiding others, isn't it? So... Uh, that's the point of the program also, so that we can be professional, and we can be guides and not lead people astray. <laughs> it's also important to read the text because we do talk to ourselves, we do explain things to ourselves, and um, we need to know the structure in which our experience lands. So uh, we understand that the water is what we're after, but the water is always going to be delivered in a certain kind of container, right? So if you don't know the container, um, if you don't know uh, whether the teacup or the uh, bottle is clean, or you don't even have one, it's going to be different. So if, <laughs> if uh, the teacher wants to pour you tea, uh, you're not just going to put out your hand, get burned, right? So we need um, the intellectual study, which is structure. It's not the experience itself, um, but it allows the experience to be uh, transmitted and allows the experience to be replicated and allows the experience to be taken over time. The experiences that we're looking for when we're screwy, <laughs> We're looking for peak experiences that explain everything. That's why we do drugs, right? Or did. Um, but actually, uh, the Dharma way is we develop uh, a style of uh, practice and training, uh, and then the experiences happen because of that. And then when they do happen, they're integrated into our lives. It is the case that some people have had interesting experiences and then um, look for teachers to explain and integrate them, and that happens also. But the most profound experiences come uh, when you've reached the peak of a mountain after you've actually done the hike and not just taken a helicopter to the top, right? So the intellectual study is, is part of the hike, as well as the yoga meditation on the cushion. Um, always meditate more than you read. So when I 
when I met with years ago, I met with a very famous uh, um, teacher, uh, Laurent Pagesche and Rinpoche, and he says, oh, you, you must have hung out with the Kargis, <laughs> Nyingmas. I said, yeah, that's true. Um, but also uh, my own Gelug teacher, who's uh, Zogchenpa, advocated that too. So if you need to read an hour a day uh, to get through the material, then you need to meditate an hour and one minute a day. Yeah. So um, the books I've recommended are difficult, but if you're not reading anything else or watching TV, you can do it, right? Um, like for the recent book we finished on uh, you know, Vasubandhu and uh, uh, Stiramati, you know, I recommended some adjunct literature. I'll hold it up because I got the books here. So, um, I've really taken to Elizabeth Zima's method of doing things. So I have these little used to write them on a separate book and go, why well, not just do this? So uh, I have recommended Trung Paramshay's Glimpses of Abhidharma. It gives a, you know, uh, a presentation which is very actually consistent with Jamgan Meepam's and Shankarakshita's uh, presentation, kind of Yogacara Madhyamaka synthesis. And then uh, Charlie Graham Shea's book. I don't know. Am I holding it up correctly? Yeah. This way. This way. So uh, on uh, Abhidharma Samachaya, also from uh, basically Yogacara perspective. Why? Why? Why does Abhidharma, at least Mahayana, Mahayana Abhidharma, have to be in some sense from a Yogacara perspective? Because from a very strictly Madhyamikan perspective, we're just dismantling it, aren't we? But you still have to know in India and in our tradition, you still have to know what you criticize. So we'd still have to read it, but also I recommend this book. Yeah. Asanga's Abhidharma Samachaya, Trala Grimshe, T-R-A-L-E-G, is a um, Kargilama, Maybe ten, passed away maybe 15 years ago at this point. Too young. Then um, the book that uh, Zim and I are going through, and you'll get more of the Buddhist psychology of awakening. Sorry. You know. The, the takeaway that uh, I want people to get with Abhidharma is that. Um, Abhidharma is about process, not about identifying things. So Stephen Goodman um, goes into that quite a bit, that we're talking about uh, pattern and process rather than objects. But isn't that all of Buddhism? Should be. So oh, in um, probably starting, uh, you know, maybe as early as August, um, I'll be going through uh, starting with some meditation manuals. So, uh, you know, please, uh, for those who are able and interested, please wade into the adornment of the middle way. Or as one translator, I can't remember his name, said it should be the middle way filigree. <laughs> Adornments to you know, filigree. So, <clears throat> um, because primarily um, the meditation texts we'll be reading are going to be um, coming from this point of view from a combination of Madhyamaka and Yogacharan a point of view. And um, they'll assume that other 
writers, even if they're writing a thousand years ago, um, will assume that you know this stuff. That makes sense, right? You know, you know it. In high school or college English, didn't they make us all read like James Joyce or something? Or Portrait of an Artist as Young Man or Ulysses? How many people read James Joyce in college? No, 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 come on. Did anybody take an English course? So, <clears throat> very good, Becky. You read about that. So, if you, read, if you read the classics, you know, um, or you read James Joyce, uh, or you read Moby Dick, they're just going to assume you know, or you know, uh, Newton, you know, I'm not Newton, but, um, you know, they're just going to assume you know people and you know things. And that's the way that meditation texts um, are written. So uh, they assume you have this kind of uh, philosophic study or practice philosophic study in your background. And then when you're reading these texts, you have retreat background, which um, everybody has a, a kind of a, a light retreat background now, but I hope to deepen that. <clears throat> but they're, they're gonna assume you know this stuff. It makes sense, right? So the meditation manuals are not written like uh, on, on the internet, like Tiny Buddha or something, or, you know, tricycle or <laughs> I don't know they're written they're written for fellow professionals is the point I'm trying to make am I overselling it I don't think so because I, I tend to have to say three three things at least the three times at least so they're going to assume you have this kind of background of of study and already some practice so that um, when you're on retreat you um, can figure this stuff out, right? Because traditionally, when you go on retreat, you're you're not able always to like I say, hey, what you know, when's the next talk, or hey, wh what's this mean? You you've got the background to be able to uh, somewhat carry on by yourself, even if it's a group retreat. The assumption is uh, you already know what you're doing. So, um, like at this point, I. I'd be unable to participate in, you know, a math class. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have the background. Somebody says, hey, do you want to, you know, finally learn calculus? Because you were a schlock in high school and college and just wanted to read Madhyamaka in high school. And I go, yeah, okay. But I would, I'd be lost. Is anybody taking calculus? Greg, yes, I'm a good educated man here. So I'm sure, you know, but... I wouldn't have the background. It wouldn't make any sense like that. Hmm. So I, I want people to particularly, uh, in reading the translation of the Padmakara, you know, here it is again. So um, the introduction is very good and Shantarakshita's verses are very concise. So it is necessary to read um, the commentary by Mipa Ramshe, just as, um, when we are, uh, you know, reading some of the other books, the commentaries are essential, right? Then I don't have to repeat myself because I figured you guys have read the commentaries. Easy. So with the meditation manuals, um, we're, uh, you know, appealing to the fact that you already have the teacup. You have your beer mug. <laughs> you have your cup. We don't have to create the cup. You're not just putting out your hand and say, pour, pour it into my hand. You already have the container so that the teacher can really talk to your direct experience, not have to give tons of explanation. So I should stop for saying, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of lecturing, but um, when I don't lecture and then people ask me these questions then I just get annoyed. So. <laughs> Am I making any sense out there? Okay. <clears throat> we don't want to have to go 
on, on long explanations uh, of a philosophic kind when we're reading practice manuals or retreat manuals. Um, just like I imagine if someone's uh, a rock climber, uh, like Patty's son, um, he's not gonna be up on the side of El Capitan with people asking, you know, what, what's a piton again? <laughs> or something, or, you know, what, what do you mean? <laughs> you don't wanna be asking those questions, right? Uh, so uh, when we're doing Vajrayana practice, um, we've had the basic tools so that we can give each other kind of uh, sign language. I imagine on, the, um, I used to know some climbers in Boulder and this was before headsets and everything. I don't know if people climb with headsets, but there's hand signals, right? Isn't that right, Petty? There's hand signals when you're climbing, you know? Yeah, <laughs> well, there are, you know, because you can't just go like, hey, don't <laughs> Well, a rope up. You know, you, you have to just make a hand signal, right? So um, this, is the, this is the people I was climbing with. I just was like a neophyte. But so um, I, I want to be able to give you guys hand signals. You know, I don't want to have to like, okay, here's what you do. You put the rope through the little hole there and then you string it around. You know, you just have to work like you've got, you're roped up with someone on a cliff like that. Then, then it goes really well and it, it's a good experience. And, um, you know, you, we achieve the goal like that. Uh, let me just stop here and I'd like comments, questions and concerns before I say anything else. Hmm. I'm making complete sense when no one says anything. That, is that po that cannot be possible? Is that possible? Okay, Patty has a question, so you better mic it up. So um, I'm really behind on reading, and so I know that this is looming these meditation manuals. And so, like for someone, you know, I know you know me so well. Like, mm. do we just do them like like? Uh, Simultaneously, since some of us, might, maybe I'm the only one, but I'm, I'm behind. Like, how does someone? How do like, you get behind? I haven't been diligent. Hmm. I've been doing practicing, but not not in, not not disciplined enough about the reading. So that's why um, I just wanted to ask. Well, just start. You know, like uh, right now, uh, this is a reasonable question. Just start reading um, uh, the Adharman right away, because that that's it, that's really essential bridge to um, uh, the text we'll be looking at. Okay. So can you start there? Yes. Do audio books count? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's on audio. Yeah, but I know some of them are. It's, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. I just looked on Kindle. It's $30 to buy the physical book, which I just did. And then it's $20 to buy the Kindle version. Okay, thank you. Okay. If somebody's raising their hand out outside of the room, I won't always know it. But I, I'm glancing once in a while. <clears throat> so, uh, of course, the meditation manuals that we'll be going over, they've all been published on Jung Yeshe and, and you know, um, Namo Buddha and different. Uh, publishing company, so it's not like secret, secret. It's just that I don't want to have to explain them from a flat earth kind of point of view, right? <laughs> so like a lot of my lectures here, I'm assuming that if you haven't done some of the reading, they totally don't make sense. 
if I had been a good tantrika, I would totally make them. So if you absolutely had not done the reading, they would not make any sense at all. So I've kind of broken my vow. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, my, uh, my main teacher uh, was very conservative, uh, said, you know, uh, of course, teach Lamrim and teach, uh, you know, uh, philosophic texts, um, like the, the main ones, but um, please don't teach uh, Dzogchen to people that are unqualified. <clears throat> so as, uh, as some of you know, really, you know, outside of a retreat setting, uh, you know, haven't really talked much about Mahamudra Dzogchen, right? A little bit, isn't that true? You know, but uh, there's so much misinformation and, and many of us are remote now, you know, uh, wonderful practitioners in Pennsylvania and Georgia and so forth. So, you know, uh, we have to speak to it, right? We just have to do it at this point. So um, we're gonna do it. But generally, um, uh, the, the Dzogchen teachings and Mom we were kept, you know, either secret or you had to go, you know, had to go through a lot of backbreaking nundro or something uh, before the teachings were given. And sometimes, uh, most of the time, invite only or secret like that. <clears throat> so now we're, we're advertising, okay, we're going through the retreat manuals and so forth. So it's important at least um, uh, become familiar with this because uh, um, Nipam's presentation, Shantarakshita's presentation will then give you, um, you know, the background when we start looking at the meditation texts. Now, have I said it three times? <laughs> that. Um, also, like when you say, you know, on retreat, these teachings aren't given on retreat. Um, uh, lots of times, uh, teachers would just summon people or just say, let's get together a small group. I've been known to do that, but um, um, unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, as a, a householder, I can't summon you all in the middle of the night like that. Uh, come on, we're going to give this kind of teaching. But my teachers would do that to me. I don't know if, you know, do you know what I'm talking about or not? Probably not. But, but it's true. That really happens. <clears throat> also, it happens in Zen, too. So when I was studying with Suzaki Roshi, <laughs> like the session would end at like, you know, 10 o'clock. And then, you know, a senior student, so he'd say, okay, I'm gonna talk to you later. And then you'd go to sleep and the attendant, the attendant would wake you up at midnight. And then <laughs> and he'd be pouring Cavassier or Suntory and then, you'd be kind of, you know, inebriated. And then the bell would ring at three in the morning. That really happens. It's not gonna happen to you guys because I'm not gonna do it that way. <laughs> Some people would probably like that. Like, okay, that, that sounds like a really good retreat. Like no sleep <laughs> and halfway wasted. And then, then you're expected to perform, I don't know. Sounds like college, right? But I want to emphasize that uh, the reason for doing the study is that when we actually spend time in the cushion and investigate deeply, um, we have the right structure and the right container. So even though the water is really pure, um, you're not going to be able to hold that much. You can hold enough for a little, or you know, a little soak offering. You know, it's like this little tea or liquor or something, but that, you know, that's just symbolic, right? You, you want to have a really big container so you can really just keep pouring, right? 
These are good questions that Patty and Michelle are asking. So this view, meditation, action, and conduct, and the other part that's really um, very classical that I'm not giving up is, you know, talking about our conduct. So the, usually you can do an online course and somebody can get the view and maybe some meditation and even get some experiences, the action. But um, unless you work closely with the teacher, you, you don't really know about conduct. People can receive all these teachings and weirdly, it, it's like a rock that drops to the bottom of the ocean. It's covered in water for a million years, but when you take it out and crack it open, it's dry inside. This is a Tibetan proverb, right? So we can be surrounded by Dharma, but it hasn't really sinked in. The only way we know if it's sunk in is to see how people uh, work with themselves and each other over time, right? And yes, and put ourselves, should put myself in the mix, ourselves through trials to see how strong the tea is. We don't know how strong the tea is until it's in hot water, right? So of course we all want to avoid awkward situations that make demands on us, but that's the only way we're really going to see if our conduct is in accord with you meditation action, right? So um, I, I'm not going to ask people to read uh, Words of My Perfect Teacher by Patron Shea, but you should. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> should read that, you know? So if, if you just kind of go, you know what? I don't need to read extra Dharma stuff. It's amazing the number of people that read just extra Dharma stuff and tell them, wow, I read this, I read this. And I go, but you haven't read the Buddha Dharma stuff. You know, I, I just don't get it. You know, I'm kind of kvetching today, but like, I read this, I read this, but yeah, sorry, I didn't get around to reading the main text. But I read this and read this and read this. I went to this movie, saw this thing. And I, okay. <laughs> it's weird. It's totally weird. It's procrastination. Now, I was reading kind of, you want to read around the topic a little bit, <laughs> something like that. <clears throat> so uh, there is enough time to do uh, the study. Uh, you know, if we make the time to do it. And I've tried to save you a lot of time. And sometimes at the end of a uh, study period, we get kind of like blown out. But if you're not blown out and, you know, a classic way to get reinvigorated, of course, is uh, words of my perfect teacher, Paturamshe, which uh, is a vast collection of Dharma knowledge and autobiography and biography and Story is a really quite nice. That is on audiobook. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who's reading it? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so that kind of book, that would be good, you know, just reading that. That's kind of, uh, feels like a little bit of an autobiography and novel, which it is, right? Like that. It's kind of uh, Patrim Shea's, a little bit his own, uh, his own Namtar. People know what Namtar is? Yeah, Namtar is like the sacred, the sacred acts, the liberation story, tar like liberation, your liberation story um, that usually somebody else uh, writes about you. <laughs> you know, after, um, but um, because of Pataramashe's devotion for his teacher, he, you know, pardon me? Oh, good, we'll give Elizabeth a chance. So where did she go? Oh, there, she's moved corners. So uh, Pataramashe kind of wrote his own Namtar. It's interesting. Okay, now, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. Um, some of the books, Lama, uh, they need to be thought about for a lot longer, don't you think? Like which ones? Well, like all of the supplemental books that you held up today and, yeah. the, and that big tome that you had us read 
you know, I've been thinking about those for a couple of years. Don't, isn't there any merit in that? Because I can't get through everything. Well, uh, I'm not sure what you're saying. So does merit like appreciating them, even though you haven't gotten through them, you mean? No, I mean, thinking about them, spending the time to think about them. Like I'm repeatedly thinking about the Stevens book, the uh, Tariq book, the uh, glimpses of Ami Dharma. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, um, that's not like a month on and you produce something about it. It's like se several years of thinking about it. Well, more than several years. Yeah. Yeah. The, no, the, these aren't like. I mean, we're going that. through all these books so fast. I don't have time to think about them. Well, all meant... I have time to do is get angry about them, which I don't want to do. <laughs> This is Elizabeth Zima's Namtar right here. <laughs> yeah, so this is introduction. So this is like your, your first kind of read. So of course, you know, uh, you know we, we cycle through them. Like um, this is uh, a number of different reads. This is a first edition. This is the first edition came out in, um, in 2005. So I've been with this for 17 years. This isn't the first time or second time or third time I've read through it. I don't know, with music, great music, I, you know, like I, I listened to Mozart with different ears than I did when I was 17, right? I listen, definitely listen to Chopin with different ears, you know? So, yeah, you have, you have to, I'm even listening to the Rolling Stones with different ears. Yeah, that's good. So, so this is 2005, yeah, I'm still cooking on it. Yeah, we're not doing a college course where then you get a grade and you forget what you just read. So I'm glad you're still cooking at this. Yes, that's what you're doing, correct. Yeah, the anger part seems like a luxury. But, you know, if you've got time to be angry, I don't have time to be angry, but I understand totally. You throw that into the Dharma. So how we study and our motivation and attitude uh, is more than the information itself, right? So, um, one time somebody just asked out of the blue uh, to Dujan what's what's the most important thing? Maybe he said different things at different times. What do you think he said this time? Huh? Is motivation, right, right effort, the effort. Yeah, motivation. So of course, when you say motivation, not just relative, but absolute bodhicitta, you know, uh, but uh, it's the effort you put into it. It's the right effort, it's the diligence, it's the motivation totally. Yeah. Okay, so um, we need to end with uh, uh, closing. So um, please, uh, if there's one book that um, you think, okay, I don't have to read my novel, I don't have to read other Dharma books, you know, unless, you know, just uh, getting through the Dharma of the middle way will um, be very satisfying for those that get through it. Do you agree? Yes. <clears throat> Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel of bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land and circle of Vaisnava mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, 
All powerful Genesis Tamsin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Lo Sangdrakpa, I make requests at your holy feet. Omahang, sweet dreams. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>